Hi right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Mod Life. Um, I don't know if you remember from the last video which I made. No. Spit that out. Bullshit, I ain't even made that video yet. Live! Hi right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Mod Life. Um, today we're going to be working on uh, the 4AGE. Uh, basically, I did a quick little video about it before. It's uh, for a friend of mine, it's for a project of his. Um, I ain't told you what the car is yet, but I'll reveal that to you another day. Um, but basically, here we are. Here's the 4AGE, 16 valve. It's, uh, it's a bit rough. Let's see, we've got the, uh, the 5 speed manual gearbox attached as well. <coughs> um, the first thing I wanted to do with this engine, really, before I did anything else, was just get rid of all of the crap that was inside. Uh, inside down there basically so that I can get the spark plugs out have a look inside the engine do a compression test without getting all the crap and everything essentially inside the engine um, so I don't know if I'm going to put that in a separate video whether I'll probably roll a few clips of that now um, and the next thing obviously I need to do is compression test now I've already gone ahead and done this but I thought it'd be a good idea to show people or explain to people how to do a compression test on an engine that's not actually in a car um, unfortunately the guy who bought this engine bought this from a guy in Ireland who said that the car was good and it was running, or the engine was good and it was running um, and do you know what with the compression that it's got it probably would have run but I think that he certainly would have known that there was something up with the car uh, something up with the engine before he did that so a little bit disappointing um, but if you ever go to like a scrapyard or a breakers or to someone's house to pick up an engine this is a really, really good idea to do this because you've got no idea. You can't hear the engine run. You've got no idea whether it's good or not. All you're doing is you're taking the center of face value. And I know there's a lot of people out there that have been burnt. I've been burnt several times before doing that. Um, really, if you can't hear the engine running prior to being removed, spend that little bit extra money and get another one that you can hear being running. Or, better yet, save the money, buy a cheap one that you know is mashed up or not running for whatever reason and rebuild it and then you've just got the best of both worlds but anyway I thought it would be a good idea to explain how to do a compression test while it's out of the car so one thing you will need to do is bolt the gearbox up um, let me try and push this around a bit just obviously get the gearbox bolted on um, well you can actually do it without the gearbox but you will need the starter motor connected uh, and in this case the bracket between the two is a little bit flimsy so I thought I'd just throw the gearbox on there to make life easy get rid of that for a second right so this is the wiring let me just pull this out that the starter motor has so we've obviously got that wire which goes to the battery that is the ticker or the activator wire. I've got this wire here. Oh, sorry, bad camera view. I've got this wire here, which is just connected to the bolt that goes and connects the start mode to the gearbox. Basically, that goes to the negative of the battery. This goes to the positive of the battery, and then what you'll do um, is you'll take another piece of wire. In this case, I just used what I had lying around that would fit in there. And then you want to touch that also to the positive connection, and that is what will start the start motor. And then essentially you just do a start compression test as you normally would, so take all the plugs out, all the plug leads out, take all the spark plugs out, um, jam the throttle open, spin it over until uh, the compression tester reads as high as it's going to go. Um, so basically I've gone ahead and I've done that already on all four cylinders. Um, I'll flash up some pictures now uh, of the compression results, but essentially uh, cylinder one and cylinder four I was really impressed with it actually, they were basically factory spec, um, really really good compression, really nice, really encouraging. Cylinder 3 was uh, still acceptable compression, 
but the difference and the variation between cylinder two, uh, three and cylinder one and four really was a lot more than I would have liked anyway. Cylinder two, uh, shit was fucked up. Um, that's got hardly any compression at all, so not good. Um, so basically the engine's going to come apart anyway, and I've got a sneaky suspicion that it's in the valve train as opposed to piston rings or anything like that. Um, but we're going to take it apart, we're going to rebuild it anyway, so we're going to take you along on the journey and show you basically a, a very simple, straightforward rebuild that you guys can do at home. Most people think that engines, you put petrol in, witchcraft happens and power comes out and you move, which is kind of true. I suppose in some respects, but really and truly they're not that difficult, especially older engines, and this is definitely something that if you've got minor mechanical like skills and you're confident with a spanner and a ratchet and you've got the tools, go for it. This is really a fantastic way to learn on an old engine like this. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get the gearbox back off and strip the wiring loom off. And then we can start taking bits off. So, yeah. Let's get the boring bits out of the way.
heavy when you forget about that. Remember, bolts back in holes. You guys can see that. It was one of the, uh, I thought we were a bolt short on the flywheel. Um, and I could see obviously the end of it was snapped off in the flywheel, sorry, from the clutch cover it was snapped off in the flywheel. I didn't expect that someone would have actually left that in there. Uh, you can see what's happened. It's got really, really marred up from being sat underneath there. So, really bizarre. Okay, so basically that's going to be a quick one uh, for today because I've actually now got to shoot off and go and do some work. Um, but I'm going to bounce now and we're going to come back. Uh, maybe, probably, I've got a few other things we need to sort out first. So probably in about a week we're going to pick this up again. We might have another episode. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet whether we're going to actually split the head and the block next week or whether we're just going to take everything off um, and start cleaning up like all the ancillaries and stuff like that and getting ready to paint. Um, we'll see how we go, but um, stay tuned, watch the next episode, if you like the video, like and subscribe, peace.